this Spider-Man annual takes place between issue 16 and issue 17. The Amazing Spider-Man Annual Number 1 Spider-Man vs. The Sinister Six In state prison, a team of specialists have finally found a way to remove the four extra mechanical arms which had become attached to Dr. Octopus after a freak accident. Now that we've taken your greatest power from you, you're just playing Dr. Otto Octavius, prisoner number 4756689. That's what he thinks. They don't suspect that I can control my arms mentally, even though they're a distance away from me. An hour later, after Dr. Octopus has been returned to his cell. My artificial arms are sent to another prison. They will be too far for my thought control. That means I must get them back, now, and plan my escape right away. Will I still have the power? And so, the evil arc villain sends a thought impulse out from his brain, a summons which is received and obeyed by his mighty mechanical arms. Return to your master. Return to your master. So powerful are they that nothing seems able to stop them as they slowly make their way along the walls and ceiling until... I knew I had the power to do it, and now to attach them to myself again and break out of here before the guards can muster enough reinforcements to stop me. The next day, J. Jonah Jameson, publisher of the influential Daily Bugle, gets an unexpected visitor. Hi, JJ. I was just passing by, so I thought I'd drop in and borrow a paper. I'd love to read your editorials. They're funnier than the comic strips. Spider-Man, you insolent buffoon! Haven't the police caught up with you yet? If only that blasted Peter Parker was here to snap some photos of him! Well, well, so Doc Ock has escaped from prison again. I sure hope he goes into hiding for the next hundred years or so. I'd sure hate to have to tackle him again. Suddenly. Hey, what's going on here? A hurricane? Oh, it's only Thor hurtling by. Boy, that guy really cooks up a storm when he gets going. He didn't even see me. He's either on his way to a meeting of the Avengers, or he's late for his barber. Meanwhile, in another part of the city, a very strange, ominous meeting is about to begin. Let's get started, Octopus. Electro is not used to being kept waiting. Be patient. We can't begin until everyone is here. It won't be long. Ah, here comes Mysterio now. We need wait for only two more. Look. If none of us was able to defeat Spider-Man before, what makes you think we can do it now? Use your head, Electro. Each of us almost beat him all alone. Working together, how can we fail? Craven the Hunter is right. Besides, I've got a foolproof plan all worked out. But let us leave the gathering of supervillains for a moment. The next day, on a street in Forest Hills, Peter Parker's spider sense detects something frightening about a passing stranger. I feel a strong, alarming tingle. It's caused by that man who passed by. I'd better investigate. It could mean... Parker, I've been looking for you. You're not gonna get away from me this time. Oh no, of all times for Flash to come looking for trouble. I saw you walking home from school with Liz yesterday. I'm through wanting you to keep away from my girl now, puny Parker. It's time you learned a lesson you'll understand. You tell him, Flash. Let him have it, Flash. Look, Birdbrain, the only lesson a meathead like you could teach is a lesson in stupidity. Now get lost. Okay, wise guy, you asked for it. Ugh. You lads, nothing better to do than engage in common street brawls. Fighting is the last resort of the ignorant. Now there's an imperishable bit of clever dialogue. Look out, mister. I can't stop my punch in time. Yay! I, I went right through him. 
Do not be alarmed. This is only my ectoplasmic spirit form you see before you. My physical self is safely at home in my study. Wow, I never thought I'd see him for real. Do you know who that was? I think so, but, but I always thought he was just some phony magazine hero. There's nothing phony about that character. That was Doctor Strange in the flesh. Or, I guess we should say, not in the flesh. Meanwhile, Peter Parker has taken advantage of this sudden interruption to make one of the most dramatic changes in all of Adventure Tim. Nobody saw me duck around the corner. I'd better change to Spider-Man real fast and find out what there is about that fella that made my spider sense tingle so violently. The aura of villainy which she exudes is almost too strong to bear. Whoever he is, he represents a grave danger. I'd better tackle him now. Hold it, mister. I want to talk with... Huh? There's nothing here. Just an empty suit of clothes. But how? But if Spidey had been able to peer beneath the tiny cracks in the grating below the empty garments, he'd have seen one of the strangest criminals of all time, reforming his body particles into normal shape once more. That was close, but the Sandman can't stop to fight Spider-Man now. I'm late for the urgent meeting which Dr. Octopus called. Moments later... My spider sense indicates that the one I'm after is down here somewhere, but he has too much of a head start, too many tunnels. I wonder who he could have been. I'd better get home now. It's almost dinner time and I don't want to worry Aunt May. Say, that's strange. There's a light on in the attic. Why would she be up there? She opened Uncle Ben's trunk, looking at his old letters and photos. Gosh, I hate to see her weep that way. I guess she never really got over Uncle Ben's death at the hands of that burglar months ago. Turning away from the window with a heavy heart, Spider-Man walks aimlessly along the rooftops, lost in his own gloomy thoughts. I can never forget that I'm partially to blame for Uncle Ben's death, and the fact that I'm the only one who knows it doesn't make it any easier to live with. He was always so good to me, such a real pal. We went everywhere. He loved me like his own son. He wanted me to be someone. I still remember that terrible day. I hadn't been Spider-Man for very long, and I didn't want to waste my powers. I remember how I stood calmly by when I might have helped to catch an escaping criminal. Stop him! If he makes it to the elevator, he'll get away! Why should I butt in? If only I had known, if I could somehow have guessed that the very man whom I allowed to pass me would be the burglar who was later to murder Uncle Ben. Why hadn't I stopped him? Why? Why? And now, no matter what I do, no matter how great my spider powers are, I can never undo that tragic mistake. I can never completely forgive myself. Sometimes I hate my Spider-Man powers. Sometimes I wish I were just like any normal teenager. If only it had never happened. But then, suddenly, surprisingly, the sure-footed adventurer loses his balance and... What? I tripped. It's impossible. It never happened before. I can't trip. I can't. Perhaps I was just too careless, so wrapped in thought that I forgot I was at the roof's edge. But then, he receives another shock. Oh no! I can hardly hold on to the flagpole! What happened to my strength? To my agility? I never believed it could happen, but it has! Somehow, without warning, I've lost my spider powers! Perhaps it's all for the best. Now I can never hurt anyone again. I won't have a secret I must always protect. I'll be able to live a normal life. But I can't hold on to this pole forever. How will I get down from here? There's the Fantastic Four, in their Fantastic Car. They see me, but, but they're flying right past me. Look, Reed, there's that swell-headed Spider-Man showing off for the public as usual. We'd better not interfere. He's a real lone wolf. This town's crawling with superheroes. Pretty soon you'll need a program to tell one from the other. Don't worry, Ben. People will always be able to recognize you. They must have thought I was clowning out here as usual. Well, I've got to try to make it to the ledge. I mustn't let go. One slip will be curtains. 
Just a little further. Almost there. I made it. Now to find an open window. I mustn't look down. I'll hug the wall and keep inching forward. Finally, after a suspenseful few minutes, the costumed teenager reaches an open window and then... I've got to get home now, as fast as I can. But I mustn't be seen. Without my spider powers, it would be too easy for someone to trap me and succeed in unmasking me. And so, it takes the once mighty Spider-Man almost an hour to make a journey which, just a short time earlier, he would have completed in less than three minutes by effortless rooftop travel. Then, after changing clothes... You look pale, dear. Is anything wrong? No, Aunt May. I guess I've just been studying too hard. Why don't you lie down for a while, Peter, or bring your dinner up to you? Thanks, Aunt May. I will. After today, I'll never have to keep the truth from her again. No more deception as Spider-Man. It all happened so fast, so unexpectedly. I always wished I were just a normal teenager again. But now, what next? What do I do with my life? Meanwhile, at the hideout of Dr. Octopus, the guest list is completed with the arrival of the winged vulture. Now that we're all here, we'll get down to business immediately. This meeting will be a turning point of our careers. Skip the dramatic speeches, Octopus. Just state the plan. Whatever the plan is, Sandman is for it. I can't wait to pay Spider-Man back. We all have a score to settle with the elusive Spider-Man. You defeated me twice, but this will be different. The third victory will be mine. We can't beat him with words. Let's band together and attack him now. He's too fast. He'd find some way to escape us. Perhaps you're right, but there must be a way to force him to battle us. Of course there is. That's the purpose of this meeting. Now be quiet, all of you. I have it all figured out. I say we must attack all at once. His power is not great enough to defeat all six of us. Bah, I'm wise to his tricks by now. I can lick him alone next time we meet. Raven does not hunt in a pack. Only by a solo victory will I achieve the revenge I seek. But he's beaten all of you in the past. Why take needless chances? I don't care how we do it. I'm just itching to tackle him. Now that you've all had your say, I'll tell you my plan. I believe it will satisfy each of you. We will each draw a number, and we will fight him one at a time, in the order of the drawing. I have worked out a detailed scheme which will force him to battle us. Now draw. Good. Action at last. On each of your cards, I have written a location. It is the place where you will battle our common enemy. And each location is best suited for your particular talents. I have left nothing to chance, as you shall see. Spider-Man will have no choice. He will have to fight one after another. And each one of us will weaken him a little bit more. So his chances will grow slimmer after each battle. If I'm the first, there will be no further battles. Enough talk. Let's look at the cards. The next day, an unsuspecting Peter Parker listlessly toys with his breakfast. Peter, you've hardly touched your eggs. Something must be troubling you. I'm sorry, Aunt May. I'm just not hungry. That's all. There's nothing for you to worry about. Honest. I've caused you enough worry in the past. I couldn't bear to cause you any more. Perhaps you should stay home today, dear. It may be a touch of a virus. No, I feel fine. Really, I think I just need some exercise. I'll go for a walk. The poor boy. He can't fool me. Something is bothering him. If only I could help him. But boys are so reluctant to confide in older people, if only they'd realize we understand more than they think. It can't have anything to do with school. He's the top student in his class. Perhaps it's that girl he's been seeing, Betty Brent. I wonder if anything is wrong between them. Meantime, at Midtown High School. I wonder where Peter Parker is today. Hey, that's right. He's not here in class. 
must be something important. This is the first day he's missed. If you ask me, it's because I scared that panty waist yesterday. He's probably out transferring to another school by now. Lash Thompson, I don't believe you. You couldn't. You're right, good doll face. I know you really didn't want Puny Parker bothering you, but you were too soft-hearted to tell him so. Oh, of all the brainless, brash, conceited boys I've ever met. And back at Peter's house. Well, no, Mrs. Parker. Peter didn't come to school today. We thought he was home. With you. Oh, dear. Now I just know something is wrong. He's never played hooky before. It must have something to do with that Betty Brandt. But so confused is Peter Parker, so heavy is the fit of depression that hangs over him, that he has completely forgotten about everything, save his own mystifying problem. I've got to get used to a normal everyday life again. I'll give up my assignment as part-time photographer for Mr. Jameson. Can't take the kind of crime pictures he wants without my Spider-Man powers. Maybe I can even find the courage to tell Betty the truth about myself. After all, what harm can it do now? Hey look, do you see what I see? Wow, I never expected to see them in real life. Hurry, let's get a better look at them. It's Giant Man and the Wasp. They've trapped a gang of criminals. Alright boys, the party's over. Better phone for the police, Wasp. Okay, Blue Eyes, but this time let's use your dime. You always forget to pay me back for those phone calls. But, as the crowd gathers around the towering crime fighter... A few days ago, I'd have been right in the center of things. But now, I don't even want to be near any criminals. At that moment, waiting at the entrance of the Daily Bugle building, we find... Miss Brent, Betty, may I speak with you for a moment? Why, Mrs. Parker, of course you may. I was just going for a cup of coffee. While two sinister figures watch nearby. There's that Brandt girl now, but who's that with her? What's the difference? We'll take them both if we have to. Let's go. And at the window of Jonah Jameson's private office. I forgot to ask Betty Brandt for the frisbee file. Maybe I can call her from here. Say, what's going on there? He's with Peter Parker's aunt. But whose car is she getting into? I'd swear that's the Sandman, with Electro inside. Wait, come back, stop. No use, they've gone, but where? Minutes later. They're here, all right, Vulture, get going. You know what to do. Ah, Miss Brandt, come in. I've been expecting you, and who is that charming lady with you? She says she's the aunt of some kid named Peter Parker, Doc. It's... Dr. Octopus. Why did you have us brought here? A doctor? How nice. Such a charming, soft-spoken gentleman. You mean you haven't heard of him? Don't let his looks deceive you, Mrs. Parker. Now, now, dear. We mustn't be prejudiced against the poor man just because he seems to have some trouble with his arms. Down, please. Make yourselves comfortable. I'll have my associates bring you some refreshments. Later, after a worried Peter Parker returns home and finds his aunt gone. I got your call, Mr. Jameson. You say you think you saw my aunt get into a car with Betty Brandt and Sandman and Electro? It doesn't sound possible. Okay, big brain. So it's impossible. So you tell me where your aunt and my secretary disappeared to. Suddenly, a wicked-looking winged form appears outside the window. I have a message for Spider-Man. The Sinister Six have captured Betty Brant, and if he wants her, he'll have to come and get her. The Sinister Six? But how the dickens am I supposed to tell Spider-Man? Put a notice in your paper. He's sure to read it. Tell him he must go to the Stark Electric Plant, Building Number 4. All right, I'll do it, but take good care of Miss Brandt. Good secretaries are hard to find nowadays. Everything's falling in place. Six of my old enemies have banded together to trap me. They know I was willing to fight for Betty Brandt twice before. 
But what can I do now? What good am I without my spider powers? How can I save her this time? Remember, see that Spider-Man gets our message, or we'll hold you accountable. I'll pour it in my paper like you ask, but I can't even swear that he knows how to read. My next edition won't be out for hours. Maybe I can notify Spider-Man faster by contacting some of the other costumed clowns in town. They probably all belong to the same club. Operator, get me the Fantastic Four. How should I know? Look in the phone book. But if the Sinister Six are holding Aunt May also, what will the shock do to her? She's just a frail old woman. I've got to do something. But what? Then, across town in the world's most famous skyscraper headquarters. Spider-Man? No, we haven't seen him since yesterday when he was sitting on a flagpole over on Madison Avenue. How do I know what he was doing on a flagpole? If someone's looking for a Spider-Man, try the Avengers. Those cornballs are always keeping tabs on everybody. What's with old Webhead lately? All of a sudden, he's become Mr. Popular. Next, an electronic circuit is activated at Avengers headquarters and... I don't know what it's all about, but it might be important, Cap. Sorry, I never even met Spider-Man, and none of my teammates are here at the moment. Shortly thereafter, in the mysterious danger room of the uncanny X-Men. Look, a flaming message in the sky from the Human Torch. It's for Spider-Man. Ignore it. It does not concern us. Continue with your training program. Meanwhile, as others seek him all over town, the real Spider-Man in the person of Peter Parker does some bitter soul-searching at home. Having lost my spider powers, I wouldn't stand a chance against any of my old foes, let alone six of them. But I can't sit back and do nothing, not with Betty and Aunt May in the hands of my most dangerous enemies. I've got to show myself, for their sake. And if this is to be my finish, at least I'll face it, like a man. Later, at building number four of the Stark Electric plant, a costumed figure slowly, nervously mounts a catwalk. Before losing my powers, I could have reached the spot with one effortless leap. But now, what's in store for me? Welcome, Spider-Man. So we meet again. Electro. This card I'm holding tells you where to go as the next step of your trail to rescue Betty Brandt. But you'll have to defeat me to get it. And as you can see, I selected a battle site perfectly suited for my electric powers. So, let the joust begin. He's hurling an electric bolt at me. No, no, don't, stop. Split second later, a startling realization dawns upon the amazing teenager. I'm still alive. I dodged his bolt. But nobody without superpowers can do that. That could only mean one thing. My powers have returned to me. I haven't lost them. I'm still Spider-Man. Don't go away, Electro. I'll be right with you. You're fast, mister, but not fast enough for Spider-Man. I don't need as much speed as you. I have more sheer power. See what any one of my bolts can do. And in a place like this, I can recharge myself, increasing my power with each passing second. Boy, he's not kidding. It's like fighting a giant living dynamo. But I shouldn't worry. Since I got my spider powers back, nothing can scare me. At least I know that I've now got a fighting chance. And that's all I've ever asked of life. I've got to hide from him for a sec while I try something. There, that does it. By grounding myself properly, even if he connects with one of his electric bolts, the force should go harmlessly through me. Now, by catching that main power switch with my web, one tug should shut off all the current in this plant, thereby weakening Electro. I see you up there, Spider-Man. Now you've really trapped yourself. That's what they all say, before I lower the boom. But this time it's true. I've been saving my strongest bolt for you. And here it is. Good thing I grounded myself. I'm able to take the full effect of it, thanks to the addition of my spider strength. And now, you high-voltage heal. I'll give you something to talk about when you wake up in your cell. You could tell all the other cons how it feels to be on the receiving end of a knockout punch by your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man.
Pleasant dreams, sweetie. Just wait here for the police like a good kid while I relieve you of this little card. Uh-oh, I'd better get going now. I hear someone coming, but who can it be? It's a funny sound, like iron clanging along. Iron Man, I should have guessed. You're Mr. Stark's bodyguard, aren't you? That's right, Spider-Man. What was all that ruckus I heard? What's going on here? No time to explain now, pal, but you'll find a reluctant guest waiting for you atop the main dynamo. Take good care of him. Meanwhile, J. Jonah Jameson grows more worried by the minute. Any trace of Spider-Man yet? If he isn't found, there's no telling what the Sinister Six will do to me. Sorry, Mr. Jameson. We haven't located him yet. You'd better call the police. Tell that nut to hang up. This ain't the missing persons, Baru. Then, after putting down the phone... I'm expecting a visitor later. See that I'm not disturbed, and I'd better not find out you're goofing off while I'm in there, understand? Yes, sir, Mr. Jameson. Go fry your hat, you old skin flint. Meanwhile, Spidey heads for his second unknown opponent. This is the place, just across the bay from the World's Fair. I wonder what I'll find here. <whistles> that whistle, like a signal, and in front of me, a savage leopard, another behind me. It can only mean one thing, Raven the Hunter. So, Spider-Man, we meet again. And this time, the hunter shall get his prey, with the aid of my two little pets. They're circling me, about to attack me at one time, from all three directions. Here they come. If I fight one, the others will get me. I've got to stop all three at once. Spider powers, if I ever needed you, I need you now. With every nerve tingling, every sense honed to a razor-sharp edge, the most amazing human fighting machine the world has ever known goes into action with dazzling speed and surging power. Missed me, all three of you. That does it, Craven. You had your chance. With Spider-Man, there aren't any second tries. He's holding my pants off with that blasted webbing of his. I've got to escape while I can. Running off so soon, Craven? Hope I haven't bored you too much. But now that the fight has gone out of your two little pussycats... What is he up to now? I've never seen anyone move so fast or fight so savagely. He's like a whirlwind unleashed. You can't leave yet, Gungadin. You still have something of mine. Don't press your luck, Spider-Man, if I ever get my hands on you. I'll worry about that when the time comes. Like, never. But first, I'll take the card which has my next address on it. Hope you're not ticklish, Craven. Quick, my pets, while his back is turned after him, we can still smash him. You never give up, do you? I'll bet you're still wearing a Vote for Dewey button. See you around, Craven. And by the way, if you've got a few minutes to kill, why don't you see a good barber? Boy, I feel like a million bucks. I realize now that I never lost my spider powers. I just imagined I did. It was all psychosomatic, brought on by a deep-rooted feeling of guilt due to Uncle Ben's death. What's that? A circle of flame below me. Well, it's nothing for Spider-Man to worry about. One quick and easy flip over and I miss it by a mile. Spider-Man, hold it, you jackrabbit. I want to talk to you. The Human Torch. I should have known. Beat it, loudmouth. I'm busy. No, wait. I've got something to tell. Yow, cut it out. Can't you take a hint, you flaming freak? I haven't time to give out autographs today. Now get lost. Boy, sometimes I wish you'd really turn bad so I could let you have it without pulling any punches. Anyway, this little flame blanket ought to hold you still for a minute. Are you kidding? No human matchstick can put the kibosh on me. Yo, and they say I'm mule-headed. Look, all I want to do is tell you something. You're harder to see than the president. Okay, hothead, talk fast, but if it's a trick, I'll rip open this water tank and turn you into a pile of soggy ashes. Relax, pea brain. I heard you in trouble. Everyone's looking for you. They say you're up against impossible odds. So I thought you could use some help. I'll admit you're not the person I'd like the most to be unstuck in a desert aisle with, but seeing as how we're both sort of in the same line of work, I figured maybe I could lend a hand. Oh, is that it? Well, I'm sorry I blew up the way I did, Torch. 
but this fight of mine is pretty personal, so I'll handle it alone. Okay, guy, if that's how you want it, rots of rock. Meanwhile, the man who has engineered the whole complicated plan of revenge against Spider-Man watches the results so far with keen interest and mounting disappointment. Hmm, so Spider-Man got past his second obstacle, also. Well, we'll have to be even more careful from now on. Sorry I've been such a poor host, neglecting you charming ladies this way. But I've had some very urgent matters to attend to. And now I hope you like this Danish pastry with your coffee. Such a charming gentleman. It's a pleasure to meet someone with such good manners nowadays. At that very moment, in another part of town, Spider-Man receives a rude shock. This is the third address I'm supposed to... Wait, the X-Men? But how can this be? Hold it, you guys. Wait. It's a mistake. I must have come to the wrong address. Look out. I don't get it. Cyclops is blasting my web without giving me a chance to explain. And then, the second startling shock. Holy smoke. They're not the real X-Men at all. They're just a bunch of highly developed robots. And whoever created them made them almost as dangerous as the originals. Imitation or not, Cyclops' power beam is still lethal enough to keep me hopping. That does it. He can't do any more damage with his eyes if my webbing holds him off balance that way. And then, the amazing teenager's spider sense tells him that one of the metal walls isn't metal at all. Whoever my real enemy is, he's behind this camouflaged wall. I'd better attack him before he can try something else. Mysterio, of course. Only you have the technical know-how to design such deadly, deceptive mechanical devices. They would have stopped anyone else. Your luck is unbelievable. Luck, you call it? Mister, you don't know the half of it. I'm the original hard luck kid. But that won't stop me from playing a drum solo on that glass fishbowl of yours unless you give me the card with my fourth destination on it. There, I seized his card, and now... Oh, that's what I get for being overconfident. Surely you didn't think Mysterio could be defeated so easily. He's unleashed a smokescreen of his special chemical mist. It's one of his greatest defensive weapons. Nice try, Mysterio, but did you forget that my spider sense enables me to find any enemy within reach, even if I can't see him? And, in case you think I'm exaggerating, here's a little convincer for you. Now to see where that car dropped into... Oh no! Not there! It fell into a smoldering section of the floor, ignited by the Cyclops robot power beam. If I touch it, it may wither into ashes. Only one chance. I'll let my liquid webbing cover it, putting out the flames. Now, when I peel away the paper, the imprint of the writing may somehow have been transferred onto my webbing. I've got to concentrate harder than ever before. It's up to my spider sense to detect the message that was written here before every last trace of it fades away. Meanwhile, back at the office of J. Jonah Jameson. What in Sam Hill happened to Spider-Man? Did he get my message? How can I know if... Hey, there's a spider outside my window. Hmm, if Ant-Man can talk to ants, then why shouldn't Spider-Man... I wonder... Who are you? Did Spider-Man send you? Don't just hang there. Give me the message. And outside the door of JJ's private office. Is old Skin Flint talking to that spider, or am I going nuts? If he is, it's not you who's going nuts. Come on, I haven't got all day. Where's Spider-Man? But now, our scene changes once again as Spider-Man, having analyzed that message on his last card, reaches his next destination. It's nothing more than a walled-in court. I wonder what ex-enemy is waiting to attack me here. That's strange. There's a note telling me where to go next, and no one to stop me from reading it. Oh well, whoever he was, maybe he got cold feet. But then, suddenly, a shape takes form right before the startled youth's eyes. Sandman, I should have guessed it would be you. I've waited a long time for this moment, and now, at last, it's here. 
So if you want that cut, come and get it. All you have to do is get past me. Know something, Buttercup? I plan on just doing that little thing. You're helping me to beat you because you're such a show-off, Sandman. If you had remained in your sandy form, I wouldn't have been able to wallop you with all my spider strength. Like this. But no, you had to take form in front of my eyes to make a dramatic appearance. Okay, so you impressed me. And now I'll just... Uh-oh, when I touched the note, it caused those iron panels to raise. They formed an escape-proof iron cell. I'm trapped inside with Sandman. Ah, still feel like gloating over your victory, Spider-Man? I purposely allowed you to get the note to let you think you'd won. Phew, I'd almost forgotten how he can reshape his sand molecules into any form. And now, no matter how you try to dodge my blows, it's only a matter of time before I connect with you. You can't keep ducking forever. But then, surprisingly, the Sandman begins to slump forward, weakening as though on the verge of collapse. What's happening to me? I can't breathe. I need air. Air. Another trick? No, he means it. I realize what happened. He made his trap too perfect. To be sure I couldn't escape, he made it airtight. And his mistake was, he needs a normal amount of air to breathe. But my spider strength allows me to hold my breath longer. Now it's easy for me to pry the door lock open and get onto my next objective. And by this time, J.J. Jameson has realized that spiders can't or won't talk. And so... I hope nobody noticed me shouting at that blamed spider. Say, what are all my competitors' newspapers doing here? It's the only way we can learn what's happening with Spider-Man. They've all been printing extras except us. You blithering numbskull! Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't we print an extra too? You said you didn't want to be disturbed, and we can't go to press without your okay. Oh no! Everybody in town has scooped me! On my own story! While I'm back at the headquarters of a thoughtful Dr. Octopus. I never thought Spider-Man would do so well. Only the Vulture remains to oppose him. I'd better make some new plans in case he reaches here. I'm so sorry that you've become involved in all of this, Mrs. Parker. Oh, that's all right, dear. I just hope that Peter isn't too worried about me. The dear boy is so nervous and high-strung. And, at that moment, Aunt May's nervous, high-strung nephew is meeting his former flying foe face-to-face -face again. The Vulture. I am the last on your list, Spider-Man, because I am the most dangerous of all. Only I can tell you where to find Betty Brent, but if you want a chance to fight me, you must do it my way. Each time we fought in the past, you defeated me with your accursed web. If you want another chance, you must remove your webbing device, or else I'll simply fly off. Looks like you leave me no choice. I don't know how I can defeat a flying man without my webbing, but this is as good as a time as any to dream up a way. Good, and now I'll show you what the vulture can do against a spider without his web. First, I squirt some specially prepared oil at the ledge on which you're standing. And then, by beating my wings violently, I can cause enough air pressure to force you back, right off the slippery surface. He's right. The oil made it so slick, I'm slipping off. But even without my web, I still have the power of sticking to any dry surface, like a spider. He lassoed my leg. Well, he's sure gonna regret that bonehead play before he gets much older. You didn't think I'd let you remain stuck to the side of that building, did you? I've got to hurl myself as close to him as possible before he can pry me loose. Now, well, he least expects it. Here goes. Now I'll hold the rope with one hand and free my leg with the other. At times like this, my old spider speed sure comes in handy. The vulture still isn't sure what I'm up to. Now to lasso his leg before he lets the rope go. I did it. Hey, vulture boy, how about that? 
If the Spider-Man business ever gets slow, I'll try for a job acting in TV westerns. And now, you wing flapping weasel, I'm gonna clip your pin feathers for you. Unless you tell me where to find Betty Brant. And I mean right now, hear? Sure, I'll tell you. You'll never be able to leave the place alive anyway. And if you do, we'll meet again, Spider-Man. I'll see to that. That's okay with me, Flyboy. You know your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man is always available for weddings, bar mitzvahs, and all sorts of fun things. Now fly me back to where I left my webbing. Giddy up. Exactly 60 seconds later. Now you just stay there all nice and snug while Spidey goes bye-bye. If you get lonely, just wave to the nice people below. But the Vulture isn't the only one whose thoughts are unprintable at that moment. Mr. Jameson, our news dealers report we haven't sold a newspaper in the past hour. Naturally, all the other papers have come out with Spider-Man extras. Except us. Get out of here. Let me suffer in peace. And one of the ominous Dr. Octopus. I hope you ladies will excuse me for a while. I'm expecting another, uh, visitor to arrive shortly. But... What about us? Don't worry, Miss Brandt. I'll be back. Mrs. Parker, what do you suppose he meant by that? I don't know, my dear, but doesn't he have the most charming manners? He's so well-spoken. And just a few hundred yards away. So this is my final destination. An old castle, imported to this country stone by stone. I have a pretty good hunch who I'll find inside. I'd better make sure my web fluid capsules are all filled. I hope I won't be considered impolite if I don't knock on the front door, but I hate to disturb people with sudden visits. If I pass Aunt May or Betty, my spider sense will warn me, but I haven't passed them yet. I'll have to keep going. Finally. Down below, it's Dr. Octopus, without his mechanical arms. I'll never have a better chance at him than now. Hi, Doc. Long time no see. Spider-Man, I've been expecting you. Sure, I'll bet you have. By the way, where are Betty Brant and Mrs. Parker? I've got to keep him occupied till I can spring my trap. What would make you think I've seen them? Who is Mrs. Parker, anyway? She's the aunt of a teenager who knows Betty. She's got nothing to do with you. Why did you bring her here? And don't pull that innocent routine on me. I wouldn't dream of it. My spider sense is warning me. Danger. Behind me. Oh, too late. Ha, you didn't suspect that I could control my arms mentally, did you? Now I've got you, you meddlesome juvenile. You were a fool to think you had a chance against the power of Dr. Octopus. Tell me something, Ock. Are you trying to defeat me by talking me to death? <laughs> ah, that's more like it. I had a hunch that your arms would relinquish their grip once I stunned you, if they were under your mental control. Uh-oh, it doesn't take Ock long to recover himself, does it? Well, I'll just have to stay out of his reach for a while. He's recalled his arms. They're going back to him. Now what's he up to? Oh well, I'll worry about that later. I've still got to find Betty and Aunt May right now. While in a nearby chamber, the awesome Dr. Octopus attaches his incredible artificial appendages, and then... Why should I knock myself out, when I can trace his movements this way? And wait until he's in the most vulnerable position. This place has more twists and turns than a corkscrew. My spider sense is tingling, but I don't see anything wrong yet. But suddenly, a trap door opens beneath Spider-Man's feet and a powerful blast of air from the ceiling forces him down before he can leap to safety. Uh-oh, look out below! Boy, what a movie serial this would make. A new cliffhanger every minute. Now, you insufferable nuisance, I'm going to defeat you in a matter most benefiting my name. I shall join you in that giant fishbowl and attack you just as a real octopus would. If you any last words to utter, Spider-Man, say them now. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot you cannot hear me through my air mask. 
What a pity. I neglected to furnish one for you. I've been in tight spots before, but something tells me they're gonna seem like picnics compared to the jam I'm in now. But I mustn't panic. I can't afford to lose. It's not just my life. I have Betty and Aunt May to think of. I've got to avoid those arms of his. I can't stay submerged as long as he can. I have to come up for air every so often, and he knows it. Just what I feared. He grabbed my foot when I went to the surface. He's starting to pull me down now. I can hold my breath any longer than any other human being, but not forever. Only one last chance. I'll release all of my webbing at once. It's working. The thin, strong strands of web are entangling his arms like seaweed. He's having trouble controlling them. My leg is free. I'll keep close to the edge of the bowl and avoid the webbing this way. The more he struggles, the more he's tangling himself up. Finally. Stop struggling, you nincompoop. I'll untangle you enough so the police will recognize you when they get here. You and my other little sparring partners ought to be real proud of yourselves. You practically handed me my victories on a silver platter. If you each hadn't been so anxious to get the credit for beating me alone and teamed up against me, you might have had a chance. And now, sooner or later, my spider sense will lead me to Betty and Aunt May. Ah, I feel a tingling already. I found you. Are you okay? Spider-Man. Oh, thank heavens. That horrible Dr. Octopus kept saying you didn't have a chance. So oh, that's Spider-Man. What a perfectly ghastly outfit. He's so villainous looking. Not at all as pleasant as that well-mannered Dr. Octopus. I'm sure Dr. Octopus would never have entered that way without knocking. Well, I'll be leaving now. I sent a message to the police before I arrived here. They should be here any minute. Just think, Mrs. Parker. We're safe. I'm afraid I don't understand any of this. Do you think it's proper to leave without saying goodbye to our host? I wonder where he went. I'd love to know who Spider-Man really is. But beneath that disguise, he could be anybody, and his mask muffles his voice so that it's almost unrecognizable. I've got to reach home before Aunt May and meet her at the door so she never suspects anything. And a short time later, as a police car drives up to the door. Aunt May, I was so worried about you. He's all right, Peter. Everything is fine. Of course I'm all right, dear. I had a very nice visit with the most interesting man. I guess you won't need us anymore, ladies. You mean you're not all shook up or anything? Heavens, no. And I've asked you not to use that awful slang, haven't I, Peter? Your aunt is a very, uh, unusual woman, Peter. I will admit I was a bit worried about you, Peter. I know how nervous you get being all alone in the house. Gosh, Aunt May, I keep telling you. That was when I was five years old. Well, I guess I'd better be going now. Mr. Jameson is probably wondering about me. Nonsense, dear. I'll get some cookies and milk and we'll all sit down for a few minutes and... Oh, oh heavens! This is what I was afraid of. A delayed shock reaction. She's just realizing what she went through now. Do you realize we missed the Beverly Hillbillies? I forgot all about them, and I've been waiting all week. You mean that's what upset you? You know something, Aunt May? In case I forgot to tell you, you're the ever-loving greatest. Peter Parker, what am I going to do with you? There you go, using that awful slang again. Sorry, Aunt May. I'll try to be more careful. I wonder how many other guys with superpowers get scolded by their aunts if they don't toe the mark. But I shouldn't pick on you, dear. I'm so glad to see you looking cheerful again. The reason I went to see Miss Brett was to find out why you were so unhappy before. So that's it. Boy, I'd better remember always to look chipper from now on. Well, we're all together now, and everything's okay. So let's have those cookies, Aunt May, and then I'll take Betty back to her office. Did anyone ever tell you how your nose wrinkles up when you smile, Peter? My, have you noticed that too? I thought I was the only one. 
But before we draw the final curtain on our sparkling little saga, let's take one last look at J. Jonah Jameson, who has known happier days. Heard from Spider-Man, Mr. Jameson? I want to congratulate him for beating the Sinister Six. Get out of here! You costumed freak should be outlawed! Ever since Spider-Man entered my life, even my ulcers have ulcers. And if old JJJ wants to find some people who agree with him, he'll need to look no further than the city jail, where he'd find... Next time we tackle Spider-Man, we'll do it this way. Ah, uh, shut up. We're through taking orders from you. I still don't know how it happened. I thought he was beaten. Until... Mark, talk, talk. The least they could do was give us each a private cell. And that's that. Just between us, we're glad we have a full year till our next Spidey Annual. It'll take us that long to rest up from doing this one. The End.